So by now, I'm sure we're all well aware of how precious resources are in the world of Genshin Impact. And by that logic, Primo Gems as a resource literally designed to be exchanged for real world currency are inherently to many people the most precious of them all. Which is to say that informed decisions are very important when it comes to using them to roll for characters. Hello and welcome to Whale Stat, I am Slice of Otaku. With this video, we intend to cover everything we know about the upcoming 5-star animal sword user, Keitahara Kazuha. If you find this video to be useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to be here for more content like it. But with that being said, let us begin. So in terms of story, Kazuha was born to the once famous Keitahara Samurai Clan. However, by the time such inheritance was passed to him, the last son of the Kedahara clan, there was nothing left. Now, if you are a fan of the Demon Slayer franchise, Kazuha might just be to your liking, as similarly to Zenitsu, Kazuha's hearing is especially pristine. And thanks to this, Kazuha has always been very in tune with nature. Chances are, if he's not sleeping or fighting, he is taking in the majesty of nature in all its glory. And so when his family home was finally repossessed, although it was a loss of a legacy to an extent, it was more than anything a weight off of his shoulders, a newfound sense of freedom, and a shining opportunity. With this, he would roam all about the islands of Inazuma, never remaining in one place for too long to avoid the dulling of his blade and his connection to nature. But during one such trip, he would come to know of a fellow samurai who he'd swiftly grown very close to. A true swordsman who, in a particular conversation between the two, yearned to witness the pinnacle of the Raiden Shogun's divine blade work. Now, the two would eventually go their separate ways, but Kazuha was confident that destiny would someday bring them together again. However, at some point, the Raiden Shogun would commence the Vision Hunt Decree, and Kazuha, as a Vision Wielder, would go into hiding and constantly be on the run. Inversely, his friend would do the opposite and challenge the god to a duel. He'd long since questioned if anyone could stand up to her strength, but more than that, in this instance, he would display to the masses the definition of courage. Kazuha, in learning of this duel, would run as fast as he could, but by the time he got there, it was already over, and so was the life of his precious friend. And before Kazuha even knew it, he'd taken his friend's now dying vision and began to flee from the country. From here, he would join the crew of the infamous pirate captain, Beido. Now, Kazuha's martial skills were incredible despite the delicacy of his looks, and although he spoke not of himself for quite some time despite all inquiry, not even providing his name, his keen senses and understanding of nature greatly improved their navigation, and so the crew welcomed him regardless. They're far more acquainted these days, but even still, he seldom speaks of his home, a home he intends to return to one day, if even with nothing beyond his blade. As to him, a vision is a signifier of power and not its source, as a true samurai puts their faith in the sword. He is overall just a really delicate character that's just as much of a poet as he is a master swordsman, and so if you are looking for a soft boy that can still handle himself in a fight, Kazuha is your guy. But now moving on to gameplay, Kazuha will most generally fulfill the role of a support DPS. You'll want him on your team for the sake of making your other units that much stronger. But don't get me wrong, this isn't to say that he has no potential as a main DPS, because as always with this game, you can have just about any character fulfill that role if you really want them to. But at the ever expensive C6, Kazuha does actually become a bit of a DPS monster, but more on that in a bit. For his normal attacks, the standout feature would have to be the multiplier on his plunge attacks, which is pretty damn high, and right there on par with Zhao's in regards to this skill by its lonesome. And ideally, by way of his elemental skill, this is something Kazuha will be making use of every 6 seconds. And this elemental skill is one of those press or hold things, and just like the vast majority of cases, you'll want to be holding instead of pressing, as that plunge damage will be converted to animo, has a bigger AoE, and leave behind a spot on the ground, pulling enemies in as a means of crowd control. And unlike the god that is Venti, these enemies will still be grounded so hitting them won't be as troublesome. And by way of his passive, if this skill comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, the plunge attack will deal an additional 200% attack damage of the infused element. 
Kazuha's elemental burst also creates an ongoing animo area of effect that changes depending on the elements you infuse it with. His two other passives being a 20% reduction to stamina consumption while sprinting for the entirety of the team, and whenever he triggers a swirl reaction, Kazuha will give all teammates a 0.04% increase to their elemental damage for every one point of elemental mastery he possesses for 8 seconds. And so with all this in mind, the guy more than validates a lack of elemental resonance on many teams, allowing for more versatility in the elements you come to possess. So at C0, Kazuha is of course a really great character that will only serve to further elevate your teams several times over. But of course, the name of the channel is Whalestat, so let's talk about those constellations. At C1, the cooldown of Kazuha's elemental skill is reduced a bit by 10%. Furthermore, the use of his elemental burst will now instantly refresh his elemental skill. Now, this isn't the craziest thing ever, but at the end of the day, it does serve to make the use of his entire kit that much smoother, so that is surely a plus. At C2, we have a buff to his elemental burst, as while within its AoE, Kazuha's elemental mastery goes up a whopping 200 points. And amazingly enough, this is the same for all other characters in the field as well. And lest we forget, that is an additional 8% elemental damage for your teammates per swirl reaction. And so this is one of the best support constellations in the game. At C4, generating energy for Kazuha becomes that much easier, as whenever his energy is below 45, the use of his elemental skill will provide an additional 3 energy for a press, or 4 energy for a hold. Furthermore, while gliding, Kazuha accumulates 2 energy per second, which is pretty interesting. But then lastly, there is the aforementioned C6 that stands to turn Kazuha into a DPS machine. After using his elemental skill or burst, Kazuha gains animal infusion for 5 seconds. Furthermore, for every point of elemental mastery Kazuha possesses, that is a damage increase to all normal, charged, and plunge attacks by 0.2%. Listen to me, that is a 40% buff from his C2 by its lonesome. And with an almost constant animal infusion, that is endless swirls that will buff your allies. C6 Kazuha is a different animal entirely, and at that, I think this is one of the most worthwhile C6 characters in the game, so you already know I will be diving deep into my wallet for this one. And because of that, I'm thinking 2-piece Veridescent, 2-piece Gladiator with a necessity of high elemental mastery for his artifacts. To ascend the character, we are going to need to collect resources firstly by way of drops from the new Magu Kenki boss fight, and then a new flower type. Fun fact, this boss drop will also be used for the ascension of Seiyu. For his talents, we will need diligence books and the gilded scales from Ejdaha. Now moving on to the characters currently expected to be on Kazuha's banner, we have the likes of Razor, Rosaria, and the legendary Bennett himself. And truly, Bennett makes his banner worth it by its lonesome as far as I'm concerned. But I urge you to not upgrade him to C6 if you get him there. He is by far one of the best supports in the game, but his C6 is just bad. It is a pitfall trap that thoroughly ruins his use on many otherwise great teams. And so please, just don't do it. But beyond that, I could actually use some more Rosarias, so that is a nice benefit for me in particular. And I imagine that since this is only the second banner she has been featured on, that many of you don't yet have her as well, so this is a pretty good inclusion. Now the weapon set to come out alongside Kazuha, Freedom Sworn, is one that will work incredibly well with his kit. First of all, the secondary stat of Elemental Mastery is massive for his abilities, as we've already established, but furthermore, beyond a 10% increase to damage, for every Elemental Reaction triggered, which will be a lot and practically a constant regardless of constellations, the sword gains a maximum of 2 sigils of rebellion once every half second, even if the wielder, in this case Kazuha, isn't on the field. From there, these sigils are consumed, and for the next 12 seconds, for the entire party, normal, charged, and plunge attack damage will be buffed by 16% on top of an additional 20% buff to attack, something that can be achieved once every 20 seconds. This is ridiculously good for support Kazuha, or even main DPS Kazuha, and that flexibility to me is amazing. 
and to further ascend this weapon you are going to need some shackles. At this point I imagine we all have a pretty good understanding of the character on paper and I for one am really excited to add him to my roster because he does sound like a really fun character to play with. Let us know if you plan on doing the very same in the comments and if so, good luck on your future roles. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Whalestat with notifications on as we continue to delve deeper and deeper into this game that we all adore. I have been your host, Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.